So tonight, we have architects coming back showing some bridge designs. We're trying to, how can we make exit 28 memorable for people on the interstate who are just passing through trying to get to Atlanta that yeah. don't know diddly about Cornelius. As they're driving by, they don't have, we don't have but seconds for, to make an impression. So we're going to use the opportunity with the diverging diamond interchange to do a bridge design that while the designs are being worked, Jim, I would tell you that our goal as a board is to make something inviting, nautical in nature, something where people know that's a, that's a special exit, whatever that is, right? And it should, it should speak about the lake, right? We're so, going to build a bridge to get them here and then also provide something for them to do to, to stay here and enjoy their time in Cornelius. Take a few minutes, Jim, and give us just, I, I mean, I know the update, but I'd love to hear it from you and for the benefit of these folks about what's going on with the tax rebound. On the positive side, we've gotten them to do some things. They're revamping their website, they're improving customer service, they're trying to straighten out some of the documentation and instructional issues. Um, on the negative side is they really haven't agreed that they've made any mistakes and uh, they haven't really moved in any direction that we know of to correct some pretty egregious valuations both on the residential side and on the commercial side. They're reluctant to do something because the ramifications are sweeping. They would almost have to revalue every property in the county. As you can imagine, Cornelius, we are limited due to the shoreline and development. So we don't have a tremendous amount of opportunity because most of the shoreline is developed. There are some, some small, small opportunities, but for the most part, most of the stuff out there is developed. And without doing some sort of takedown plan to try to go buy a row of businesses or a row of homes that sit on the water, the land just isn't readily available. I'm excited about the prospect of rail someday, but it has to be done where it makes sense. And um, I will tell you that from the start, my real personal heartache is it's very clear that Norfolk Southern is not on board or was not on board as much as we all thought they were on board with. So our 15 item you know, document of recommendations of how to proceed with the, with the red line, number one was basically in layman's terms, let's get our arms around what Norfolk Southern really wants to do or doesn't want to do. Because without that, that's a major stakeholder. They own it. They own it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's really not a lot to talk about until I think we get farther down the path with Norfolk Southern. You've got to look at a funding um, mechanism yeah. that works for everybody. The state has to be on board. And that was another kind of the, you know, we were told the state was all in, but then through back channels you hear they weren't. Mm. So, you know, the people who actually had to approve it and sign off on it, not so much. The Westmoreland Athletic Complex, you know, we have this beautiful facility that's built, but it's not being used. Um, you may or may not be aware, the reason it's not being used is there's just a turn lane issue off of Westmoreland. Um, that's being worked, and by end of June, early July, that turn lane will be installed so we can access the facility. It's, yes. a, it's a legal liability. We can't just turn onto the gravel because if someone rear ends somebody and someone gets injured, and we're not allowed to use it, and we're trying to use it, it will get ourselves, it'll put the town in harm's way. So we have the to wait. Is too the liability is too great. So the place is still closed, and I don't like it any more than anyone else's. You have this beautiful facility done sitting there, but trust me, we're pushing everyone as hard as we can to and get yes, that turn line done. we knew this turn line was coming, but yeah. when we went, we had to go through friendly condemnation for two families. Um, <coughs> it took us forever to find out where the property line was because all of that property goes back Years. Centuries, no. you know, no. um, and so there was a lot of due diligence, and then we had to go through no. friendly condemnation, and then there was more land we needed, so we had to go back and get new appraisals, and so that's just know, an, it's, it's an, been work being worked on. Right. So that's a good thing. So WAC is on its way soon. Um, our next meeting will be the third Monday of May, it's the 21st, and we'll have Mayor Jeff Tart and Anthony Roberts here, and we'll just cover the latest topics that are ongoing and are new there.